Christmas Eve service here at KOP Chapel. Yes, it's slightly different than our usual. Uh, the room is fairly empty. Um, and we know that you would love to be here with us. Although uh, our pandemic stops us from doing that. And so we make the best that we can in our situation. So welcome one and all. We are going to do some things that are slightly different than our usual, but that's how life is. Um, so we hope you enjoy it, and please give us your feedback um, by calling the church, or sending an email, or sending a text um, to me. Whatever is the easiest for you to deal with in terms of worship. Also, this evening, you're going to need several key things. I've sent you the, an email with the music for tonight. I hope that you were singing along to O Come All Ye Faithful. Uh, we will be singing shortly um, Away in a Manger. And so please have that ready. Also, uh, most of you received the light uh, with a pen in the mail uh, that I dropped off to your home. Uh, you will need it or a candle or some type of light for later in the service. As we begin, uh, let us start with our greeting and opening prayer. Let us dance with the light in the Lord and let our hearts be filled with rejoicing for eternal salvation has appeared on the earth. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God our Father, you have brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, and that we may joyfully welcome him to reign over us. Open our ears, that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips, that we too may sing with uplifted hearts. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, I'm going to invite the children up. So, what's missing from this scene? The baby Jesus. So, would you put the baby Jesus in his place, please? So, we have Mary. And who was Mary? Jesus' mother. And we have Joseph, and who was Joseph? Jesus. Jesus, Father on earth. And we have the angel who told Mary and Joseph that Jesus was coming, what to name him. As well as we have the animals that were around and the shepherds so that all were present and ready for this great occasion. Now, What's interesting about this is how do we how are we able to see it? There's a light there, right? And the church is all lit up tonight. And so why do we have so many lights? Well, we consider Jesus to be the light of the world. And so as you look and see all the different lights around the city, as you see them around the church and other places, they're all about recognizing the birth of Jesus. And we give thanks for that. And so as you 
light up your home with decorations and lights. As you see the lights in the community and around the church, know that we're celebrating the birth of Jesus. So let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for these children. Bless them wherever they may be. Help all of us to grow and prosper in your name. Help us to be able to see those lights and remember that all the lights of this season celebrate the birth of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, as we pray this day, let us pray together. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks this evening for all those that have contributed either in their time and actions financially. We still need financial help to keep our doors open and keep the lights on. And so every little bit helps. So even if you typically only give a dollar, if you can increase that to $2, that would be a great help. And so forth and so on. So just adding a little bit extra. Because I know that you can if you so choose. And giving thanks for all, let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for all the many blessings you have given us. We thank you for this day and for the ability to worship you. Bless our offerings. Multiply them so that they might be used to help those in need, not only here but around the world. We pray in your Son Jesus' name. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. Verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who live in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased us its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest as people exult when divided plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this point in time, I'm going to introduce our Bishop of the Philadelphia area, Bishop Peggy Johnson, who is going to bring our message today and will conclude on video with a song. We hope that you enjoy it, uh, and we will continue our worship from here. Hear the word of the Lord from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, 
I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angel went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this, your holy word on this holy night. And we just pray that you will speak the word into our hearts in such a way that we'll go forth and tell the good news of Christ. Christ is born in Bethlehem and into our world this day. And Lord, now in spite of me or through me, speak your word to your people. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It was late December, and a young pastor, barely 30 years old, took a trip to the Holy Land to recover from exhaustion. It had been a very difficult year. There was widespread racial tension in the city. There were armed conflicts in the streets, an assassination. And on top of that, outbreaks of typhoid, malaria, and smallpox were everywhere. This discouraged minister came to Bethlehem to renew his faith and find some holy rest. Who was this preacher? You might think it's one of our pastors serving currently in our communities, given the unrest in the world and the pandemic of COVID. But no, it was a famous minister who lived in Philadelphia more than 150 years ago. The pastor's name was Phillips Brooks. He was a giant of a man, being six foot four inches tall, and he weighed 300 pounds. His accomplishments included serving in two of the most prestigious Episcopal congregations on the East Coast, in Boston and in Philadelphia. And he grew his churches to more than a thousand members. He also lectured at schools of theology, and he preached a eulogy for President Lincoln. Later in his life, Brooks was elected to the Episcopacy and served as a bishop, presiding over numerous congregations in Boston. But he was not really known so much for these accomplishments. What was his enduring claim to fame? Well, a little Christmas carol that went like this. O oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee. Tonight. When the exhausted pastor visited the Holy Land in Christmas of 1865, he was in Bethlehem on Christmas Eve at the service that started at 10 o'clock p.m. and went on until 3 a.m. It was held at the site believed to have been the place of Jesus' birth, the Constantine Basilica and he rode on horseback for five miles from Jerusalem to Bethlehem to get there. As he galloped along the rolling hills where shepherds likely kept watch over their flocks, 
and he observed the, scarlet, the starlit sky. Reverend Brooks found hope and peace for his tumultuous life. That very night, he began pondering the words of this famous Christmas carol that would soon be put down on paper. The hopes and fears of all the years are indeed gathered in a special way at Christmas, not just 150 years ago, but still today. We have experienced an incredibly fearful year. Hardly a household has been spared death or illness. The effects of this seemingly endless pandemic with its isolation, financial disruption, and uncertainty have been deeply troubling for all of us. On top of that, there's been much heightened racial tension in our country, and there's an urgency for us to finally come to terms with our history of segregation, white privilege, and discrimination. Many are experiencing deep, deep fatigue, anxiety, and fear. And yet the true message of Christmas is one of hope. Hope in God, hope for the future, and hopeful directions from God. Just like Reverend Brooks, we are looking for hope in the midst of our fears. So what are the signposts for hope that we can hold on to this night? Well, first, we can find hope in the good news of Jesus Christ coming to save us. The whole point of Christmas is that God broke into our lives with his incarnation. And God was Jesus Christ the Lord. God is on a mission to save us from sin and death because of his great love for us. God sent his only begotten son to earth at Christmas to begin this search and rescue plan that culminated with Jesus' death and resurrection. The angel said to the fearful shepherds, I bring you good news of a savior born in the city of David, a savior. This angel came to those who were on the bottom rung of life to bring hope. And that good news of hope is for everyone and for you as well. It is hope that comes from knowing that God's presence is with us, Emmanuel. There is hope for the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Whatever the life you have right now, whatever your struggles, know that Jesus is your answer. God is with you. Christmas is the celebration of that kind of hope. Not the festivities or the gift giving or the decorations. The hope of Jesus Christ does not disappoint, does not get old, never gives up on us. We simply have to look to Jesus to help us and to save us. As the carol says, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sins and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. So first and foremost, hope comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Secondly, we can find hope in the ministry we have with the next generation. Reverend Brooks' famous Christmas carol was written specifically for children. It was really written for a children's Christmas pageant a few years after his visit to Bethlehem. The tune was hastily composed by the church organist at the time, a man by the name of Louis Redner. Redner tells how things were very busy just before Christmas that year and he kept putting off writing this tune for the pastor. And actually, the tune came to him in a dream. And as he tells the story, he said an angel whispered the tune to him as he slept. Well, we can build hope by prioritizing the nurturing and teaching of children and young people. They will in turn teach it to their children and their children. Hope comes from investing in the future this way. 
There was once an old man who was planting fruit trees. And someone came to him and said, well, why are you bothering planting a fruit tree? Because you'll never live long enough to eat the fruit on that tree. And the man said that others had planted trees in the past that bore fruit that he ate from. And he said now it was his turn to do the same for the next generation. It is everyone's responsibility to pass on the hope of Christ with that kind of attitude. Reverend Brooks, though a famous orator and highly sought after preacher and teacher, had a special ministry with children. He never married or had his own children, so he intentionally spent time with young people during his ministry. One of them was the legendary deaf-blind Helen Keller, who was given an audience with him, the great preacher, in order to find out more about God. Helen was 11 years old at the time and was a student at the Perkins School for the Blind in Boston. Her teacher and interpreter, Ann Sullivan, brought her to see Reverend Brooks, and he told her about God's love that surpassed sight or sound, because of course she was deaf and blind. Helen exclaimed later in her autobiography that he confirmed what she had instinctively known, that there was a God, that there was this presence of love in her life and that she was never, never alone, even in her isolation. Brooks and Keller continued to correspond for many years about theological matters through many, many letters. It was Keller, I believe, that inspired verse three of our carol. How silently, how silently, the wondrous gift is given. So God imparts to human hearts the blessing of his heaven. No ear may hear is coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. So friends, invest time with children in your communities, in your family, in your churches. Plant seeds of faith and nurture their talents and calling. Believe in the hope that they give to the world and the hope that you can give them by sharing your experience and your wisdom. Finally, find hope in widening the door of your hearts to all humanity. The angel told the shepherds that there was good news of great joy for all people. This was God's master plan all along. Jesus was not a savior for just the Jews or the shepherds on the hill, but for everyone for all time to come. And we are not fully embracing Christianity if we miss out on this point. All people, all people are essential for any kind of hope, peace, and prosperity that can ever come upon this earth of ours. That includes those who live on the margins of life, those who don't look like us. Father Richard Rohr, a contemporary Franciscan theologian, recently wrote, as different parts of the body of Christ, we each have strengths and gifts that are necessary for the entire body. We are called by the Spirit to use these gifts in service and love for our hurting world, and not just for our private sense of holiness. Good words. You see, hope for this world comes when people stop living as if only some people are in and some people are out. Fear of the other and treating people as less than who are not like us is the attitude that makes for injustice, turmoil, and war. Reverend Phillips Brooks was a bold advocate for the abolition of slavery during his time. He preached God hates counting another man born inferior just for the color of his skin. And not surprisingly, he got himself into a lot of trouble for saying those words. The church in his day didn't want to get involved in the politics of race. But Brooks spoke about it. He taught about it. And he took on the evils of his day head on. 
He once said, do not pray for easy lives, pray to be stronger people. Our hope comes when the family of humanity becomes the beloved community where all are accepted, empowered, and included. Now that's a tall order, but you can do what you can do with the life you have right now. It's interesting that the hymn, O oh, Little Town of Bethlehem, actually had a fifth verse. And for some reason, that fifth verse was eliminated from the hymn books once it began to circulate among various publishers. But it goes like this. Where children pure and happy pray to the blessed child, where misery cries out to thee, son of the merry mild, where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door. The dark night wakes, the glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. This bold stanza calls for the ending of misery and love that looks out for those who are suffering and faith that holds wide the door to everyone. When we all take responsibility for doing the justice and mercy work of God on this earth, we will get joy, we will find peace, and we will have hope. So may you have a blessed Christmas season. May the hopes and fears of all your years be met in the person of Jesus Christ, now and forevermore. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this holy message of peace on earth, goodwill to all people. We thank you for Jesus Christ who came to be born among us and to live and die and be resurrected for us. And now, Lord, we just hold on to that hope and the hope that comes from all the things that we can do to engender hope in the future as you have given us a calling to do that as your people. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
enjoyed that sermon as well as that additional song. And so now, let us join together in the singing of Silent Night. And please turn on your candles or light your candles. Or take your flashlight and light it.
you gave yourself to the world. Grant that being born in our hearts, he may save us from all our sins and restore within us the image and likeness of our Creator, to whom be everlasting praise and glory, world without end. Amen.